LEGO opened the voting for a Series 2 of their BrickLink designer program with 190 sets in this wave. These are from fan designers that have created sets for adults. Last week, we dove deep into modular buildings and medieval sets, giving them a rank of bronze, silver, or gold. But there was so much more to cover, and there were a lot of sets that I couldn't call out. We're going to take a look at 20 of my honorable mentions. Some of these are returning from Series 1, but I think a lot of these deserve some spotlight. Although I won't be grading this time, I'll be pointing out some impressive features and cool elements that really make these sets stand out from the crowd. Our first set is a throwback to Series 1, the Brick Cross train station. And I must say, it's every bit as fantastic now as it was the first time around. The standout feature for me has to be these glass skylights. They add an impressive architectural touch that instantly elevates the design. It's these kind of details that make a set like this really unique. Equally noteworthy is the floor tiling. The choice of the color and pattern works in perfect harmony with the overall design. But that's not all. Nestled on the side of this station is an authentic cafe. It's a brilliant addition, adding an extra layer of realism and really tying in perfectly with the overall setting. Okay, next up on our honorable mentions list is a beautiful restaurant. You might remember seeing this one in series one, but we didn't have a chance to cover it. So let's take a little dive into this and see what we have here. The first thing that I want to point out is this stunning traditional exterior color palette and architecture. It immediately sets the tone for the entire build. And the design thoughtfully extends over to the sides of this building as well, which you don't typically see, so I like that extra touch. And I really like the addition of this beautiful foliage that's on the top of the building. It really blends together nicely with this concrete and brick setup. On the ground floor, we have the restaurant and kitchen with a really beautiful design. The second floor has a mezzanine that overlooks this busy restaurant below. And then on the top floor, we have a cozy studio apartment, adding a residential feel to this build. Next up, we have something that's a staple in any busy city with this really cool convenience store. I really like that the designer included a parking lot with this set. It really adds a lot to the authenticity, and I bet it would look really cool between a couple of other modular buildings. And adding to the realism, the designer included some working sliding doors for the entranceway. It's small features like this that really go just above and beyond. But then check out what we have on the inside. It looks really awesome. There's so much detail here. It's like stepping into a real convenience store. This designer really nailed it. You've got everything. There's even a convenience store food and drinks. The aisles are packed with so many goods. This is something that you would see in a convenience store and the realism here is just top notch. We have another set that makes a return from series one and I really enjoyed this one a lot when I did a deep dive on it. I just love the small details here. Like on the side of the building, you see this ivy that's cascading down. It really gives it this antiquated, been there forever type of feel. And the inclusion of a mini pirate ship is just the cherry on top. Another thing that I want to point out is the rock formations on the side are beautifully crafted and they're incredibly realistic. And it's not just the exterior that's got our attention, but when you look at the inside as well, there's a ton of neat little elements that bring this pirate island to life. This next set is really unique. I've never seen anything like this. At first glance, it looks like a medieval themed creation with some really neat elements. But as we dive in deeper, you'll see that it's so much more. This is actually a three-dimensional board game. The genius of this design lies in this flexibility. You can actually rearrange the scenes however you want, creating new narratives and challenges every time you play. And adding to the immersive game experience, the set features a diverse set of characters and enemies with a lot of details. And as for the scenes themselves, they're really beautifully handcrafted with a lot of creativity and each scene just really brings in that medieval theme. It looks, it looks pretty awesome. Perhaps the most extraordinary thing about this set is that the designer actually included rules for the entire game, and this transforms the set into a fully playable board game reminiscent of tactical role-playing video games, and that's, that's really awesome. Okay, this modular building is a memorable standout from Series 1, and it still manages to be eye-catching. The angular structure of this red building is really cool, and the color choices for this set are really bold and they contrast nicely compared to other traditional LEGO buildings, making this a definite standout. Okay, as we take a look at each room, you'll see that there's a ton of character that's included here, and it really aligns perfectly with what you would expect to see in a real glass studio. 
Everything just feels cohesively designed and it has all the elements that a glassmaker would have in a shop like this. Okay, we have another familiar site from series one with this grocery store. I actually didn't cover this one, so let's see what we have here. Okay, on the first floor, you'll find the grocery store with some really great details. If you look over on the side, you'll spot a bakery section that you'd find in a place like this. And then up on the next floor, you'll find a clothing section right next to a quaint little restaurant. And these elements really work together to bring this build to life. And moving up to the third floor, we have a fully detailed apartment with a living room, kitchen, and bathroom. And when you take a moment to absorb everything in here, you'll realize how many neat details that this designer has packed into it. From the smallest of accessories to the overall layout, everything about this set is just jam-packed. And this also looks like it'd be a lot of fun to build. It's a really huge modular building and I'm totally on board with that. All right, this next set really thinks outside the box and brings us something refreshingly unique. I don't think I've ever seen a set with a semi truck pulling a modular building. So first of all, the trucks that are included, I think would blend really well within a Lego city setup. And the modular building itself is really nicely designed. I love the use of colors and an abundance of details that really brings living space to life. The build gives like this modern cabin vibe to it. It's quite distinctive and really appealing. And the brickwork and um, wooden siding blend together really seamlessly, enhancing the aesthetics of this building. Okay, this next set masterfully captures the unique architectural style that you would find in the world's highest mountain range. The techniques that are used to construct this rugged terrain are nothing short of phenomenal. The designer managed to create an intricate, realistic landscape with really impressive formations here. And I really love the color scheme of this vibrant red roof. It really pops against this white building. It's really eye-catching and really true to life, actually. The interior has a really mysterious vibe to it, but at the same time, it feels authentic. And I do like the addition of all of these candles and all these decorations. Everything just really ties well together. Okay, the designer of this set submitted a different pirate ship in series one, which we'll revisit shortly, but let's check out their latest creation. The design of this ship is really amazing. The choice of colors is just spot on and it brings to life a lot of intricate details that make up the ship. I really like the modular design. It allows easy access to all parts of the ship and it gives you a chance to admire the details inside of the ship and it'll make for, I think, a really good building experience. Pirate ships have always offered a unique and enjoyable building experience and it's clear that this designer has mastered the art of creating these iconic ships and this is definitely one to keep an eye on. I absolutely love the 1950s throwback embedded into this gas station. It's a cool, refreshing take that brings the iconic aesthetic of a bygone era into Lego form. From the classic styling of this police car and this hot rod to the vintage typography that you see in the logos, the set captures the essence of the 50s in a really authentic way. And as you move around the set, you can just tell from every angle that this designer totally nailed the vibe of this gas station. And overall, it just really looks fantastic. The interior is more on the simpler side, but I think it echoes the less complicated times of the 50s. And it's a thoughtful touch that really as the realism to this chosen time period. We dove into this set in series one and it was just absolutely amazing. It's just jam packed with amazing arcade details. The first floor takes you straight into the action with these classic arcade games where you can earn tickets. And it's right next to a great hangout spot with this air hockey table and a place to pick up some pizza. And next to all of that, you have this prize zone, which is perfectly placed by the entrance and it really captures the vibe. If you go up to the second floor, you'll see an, oh, just a wide array of games and I like that it overlooks the first floor as well. And there's even more up on the third floor. It houses a ton of arcade games and the details are just phenomenal. You can easily recognize all of these games just from a quick glance. All right, we have another set that we dove into in series one. It's a really unique medieval building. One aspect that really makes this set stand out is that it captures a work in progress cathedral being built. And it's not just a static building, but it's a snapshot of a moment in time. And this set looks cool from every angle. The stained glass windows in particular 
are a treat that adds an authentic touch to this overall design. But without a doubt, my favorite part has to be the sculptor that's just fully immersed in his work. He's busy crafting a mini scale cathedral, and this detail adds so much depth and character to this entire set. All right, next up is another gem discovered in series one, which simply blew me away with its detailing. The architecture of this set is just really awesome. It takes you back to a different time with this medieval aesthetic, but it's also really vibrant and colorful, and, and that gives it like a contemporary edge. And the inside of the building, which you can access from the back, is just packed with rooms that offer a ton of exploration. Each room is just crafted with incredible attention to detail, and it has a lot of character and personality from this time frame. Okay, this one may ring a bell for some of you because it did make an appearance in series one, though we didn't get a chance to cover it back then. On the first floor, there's a garage, which is a feature that I really love. There's something really satisfying about Lego garage doors. I don't know what it is, but they're really enjoyable. And of course, we have the doctor's office itself, complete with all the accessories that you expect to see in there. And there's even a waiting room tucked in the back. And then moving on up to the second and third floors, you'll see a fully detailed apartment complete with all the rooms that you would expect. There's a lot going on here and it's pretty cool that they decided to put that on two different floors. Overall, I think that this set is filled with a lot of really neat details and has a cool blend of elements that work really well together. It's just a really nice modular doctor's office. Okay, next up we have a set that I believe is new for series two and it's a departure from what we're used to seeing. It has a very unique design that's inspired by both Baroque and neoclassical architecture. Okay, we're gonna start from the top of the building and then work our way down. So at the very top, you'll see this nature exhibit, which is really cool and is right next to a little snack area. And ascending down to the middle level, we find a gallery that houses an array of historical artifacts. The attention to detail here really gives the entire space an authentic museum feel. And then down on the first level, you'll see an impressive staircase and a really cool turnstile that's next to the entrance and ticketing area. It's a really nice addition to this museum set. Okay, we have a throwback pirate set up next. So one feature that I absolutely love about this set is its reconfigurable nature. You can actually move around everything, you can mix and match and just rearrange however you want. So this will blend in really well with other pirate themed sets and I do like that you can access the interior of the island from this back piece. And even more so, this set is just full of hidden treasures, there's interesting secrets, there's a lot of interactivity that's included with this as well. It's neat how it brings you back to the retro LEGO pirate days. Okay, let's take a look at another pirate set, although this one may be more on the smaller side. It's packed with a lot of interesting design techniques. The color palette has been thoughtfully chosen here and I think it works really well. It breathes a lot of life into this set. And I love the clear tiles that were used to create this glistening waterscape. I think it just blends really well together. And if you look at the rock formations on the sides of the building, I think that they've been designed very well from every angle. They just look amazing. It has a lot of depth and just like this three-dimensional feel to this really small set. It just works so well. Okay, we have another masterpiece from the same designer who brought us the first ship we discussed in this video. And I showcased this gem back in series one and it left quite an impression. I recognize it right away. The color scheme here really works well together. These dark colors contrast exceptionally well with these gold trimmings. It just looks really classy for a ship like this. And like with the other ship, I love the modularity with this one. It's great that you can access all the interiors and I really do think that it makes the build more approachable. And the designer incorporated a really cool detail with these skeletons that are on the side. It just adds like this menacing look to it. It's exactly what you would expect from a pirate ship. Okay, next up we have an incredibly unique modular building with this Japanese street market. One of the things that I absolutely love about this set is its versatility. You can configure this in three different ways, meaning there's plenty of room for creativity. And this set is just full Full of life and color with details that make it feel like a really busy street market. The designer has incorporated a center hinge that's removable for different configurations, giving the set even more flexibility. And in one of the layouts, the buildings are placed back to back, gives it just like a totally different look and feel. And I love that the designer included easy access to the interior. It's always great when you can do that with any modular build. And if you want to see the top sets from series two where I go in depth and grade them a bronze, silver, or a gold, check out our video here. I have a feeling at least one of these will make it through the program and hopefully we'll be building it one of these days. So I'll catch you there.